This is the Intel Core i7 3770K. Even though it's 10 years old, this Ivy Bridge chipset can still hold its own when paired with a decent GPU and can even be overclocked to 30% above the original clock speed. With so much overclocking potential, this unlocked CPU is so unique I just had to get my hands on it. Welcome back to Hardwired Review everybody, Nate here back at you with another video and in this one we're going to be taking a look at the Core i7-3770K doing some gaming and performance benchmarks to see how it stacks up compared to modern hardware. Let's get right into it. Back in 2012 when the Intel Core i7-3770K was released, it was one of the best CPUs you could buy. Featuring 4 cores, 8 threads, and a 3.5GHz clock speed, it was a workhorse for the era in which it was released. In terms of single core performance, this CPU led the pack 10 years ago. Now it's lagging a bit behind what a mid-range CPU should perform at but it's only around 15% behind the much more recent and comparable i3-10400F. What's not behind is the overclocking potential that you can get from this CPU, which is still the best you will ever find from an Intel chipset. You can get a whole gigahertz increase all the way up to a 4.5 gigahertz clock speed and even higher sometimes, which is nuts. No modern CPUs from Intel or AMD are going to have that amount of overclocking margin because now right out of the box, most CPUs sold are already pushed to the max, so you're not going to have that much more headroom when it comes to changing the core frequency. Now to the fun part, benchmarking and gaming tests. I plan to use the older build I put my i7-3770K in for gaming, so I'm excited to see how it performs with a modern graphics card and how the Cinebench tests stack up to recent comparable CPUs. Running CSGO at minimum settings with a 800 by 600 resolution, I was able to get around 30 FPS and the CPU stayed in the 70 to 100% usage range. This was using the Intel HD Graphics 4000, so you know, you can't expect much from that. So I really wasn't surprised that the graphical performance was not that great. But now I want to see how this will pair with a modern mid-range graphics card like my GTX 1650. Installing my GTX 1650 GPU really, really helped out the performance. I was able to run CSGO at around 175 FPS at my monitor's native resolution of just under 1080p. Because I wanted the best comparison between the 3770K with and without my graphics card, I didn't change any settings aside from the resolution, so this is still running at low settings like before. In the gaming test, the GPU made a huge difference for the performance, which I knew it would. So I'm very excited to learn that I can use a mid-range GPU paired with this CPU in the future, which is amazing. Onto the Cinebench benchmarking, in the multi-core test, the i7-3770K achieved a score of 26,061. This is on the low side compared to modern chipsets with mid-range offerings from Intel, usually sitting in the 5,000 point range. Don't let that stat upset you though because we are comparing this 10 year old CPU with modern chipsets so there's obviously going to be a disparity in performance. But that's not where this CPU really shines. It does a fair bit better in the single core test, mustering 658 points. So how do we put all these findings into perspective? I've compared the i7-3770K to modern CPUs, however most of them are not similarly specced. So to give you a better idea, this is a side-by-side -side comparison between the 3770K and the i3-10400F. They both feature 4 cores and 8 threads and have a base clock speed of 3.5 and 3.4 GHz. We can see that in terms of raw processing power, the i3 runs lap around this much older piece of silicon. That isn't the only aspect that should be considered though. Taking a peek at the much more in-depth user bench analysis, we can see how they both stack up a lot closer than the numbers would tell you. There is only around a 10% disparity between these two CPUs if you factor in everything else that goes into a central processing unit. Still, with these both being $100 and one being much newer than the other, I think we can see which one is the recommended buy. 
We've seen how much better modern chipsets are when compared with the i7-3770K. But in my opinion, it's not really a fair comparison considering how much older this CPU is. But the one spot and the one area where I believe the 3770K really takes the cake is overclocking. And I've mentioned it a little bit before. Nowhere are you going to find a newer CPU in 2021 that's going to give you over a gigahertz clock speed increase. You might be thinking, since this can be overclocked so much, that after the 1 gigahertz increase in the clock speed, it might come up better in the rankings than before. And the Cinebench multi-core score, it's still kind of at the bottom of the rankings with 3100 points. It's a whole lot better off than it was before, and if we take a look at the single core performance, it got up to 784 points. It's still not really there in terms of a mid-range modern CPU, but it's still just crazy to think about how much extra performance is packed into this 10 year old CPU. And ultimately that's the reason why I wanted to make this video. Not that it's 10 years old and still as good or better, but that it's 10 years old and is still very impressive. The Core i7-3770K might not be able to keep up with the raw performance that we're seeing from newer Intel or AMD CPUs but it's still insane in terms of overclocking and it's just so much fun to mess around with. Pairing this with my LG1155 motherboard, I'm able to use this CPU to bump the performance to the max when it comes to my older hardware and that'll allow me to use modern mid-range GPUs as I've said with those parts. Even with its cool features, you should not buy this CPU unless you plan on slapping it in an already completed older system like I am. There's just too many similarly priced options that offer way better value now. But for those who want to upgrade their LG1155 based systems like me, this is the best of the best and will open up the doors for more substantial GPU upgrades. But for most people, I think it's just a novelty piece of hardware representing a bygone era of Intel Silicon. Alright everybody, that's it for this video. If you did enjoy it as much as I did enjoy making it, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button down below. Also, if you do have any feedback for me, please leave that in the comment section below as well. If you would like to check out this CPU or some of the other CPUs I mentioned in this video, those will be linked in the description as well. Thank you all so much for checking out this video and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.